Interior design. Interior design is the creation of a functional and beautiful living environment. That varies per person and is based off of what you like and what you don't like. As an interior designer, you will be asked to design according to what different people like. So even if you don't particularly like the design, you're still going to need to make it if that is what your client desires. To create a functional and beautiful living environment, we use the elements and principles of design. The elements of design are the tools that you use to decorate a room. Not actual tools like in this toolbox, but the tools that we'll be talking about shortly like shape, form, color, etc. The principles of design are the rules for how we use our elements. They're what actually pull this together so that it all looks good and works together. That'd be things like proportions and ratios. The elements of design are space, shape and form, line, pattern, texture, and color. There are six of these. Let's start with space. Space is the area between objects in a room and the actual area a designer has to be working with. For example, we have two different rooms here. One has a lot of open space and one that has a lot of filled space. The one that's filled with items has a lot of positive space. The area is being filled or used with these objects. Negative space is area not being used or empty, so all this open carpet or this wall space is some negative space. You have to use positive and negative space together. You have to find the balance between enough negative space that the room does not feel extremely crowded and enough filled space so it doesn't feel like the room is completely empty and nobody lives there. Problems often, often occur with space. You either have too much space and you literally do not know what to do to make it feel like the place is lived in, or there's not enough space and you literally can't fix everything or do everything that you would like in that space. Some tricks that you can do to make a room seem more spacious is you can use small furniture, small patterns, small textures, you can use a minimum of furnishing and accessories. Use light and cool colors. They don't jump out as much. You can use mirrors. You can place furniture near the walls so they don't break the room into smaller pieces. And allow as much floor as possible to show. Using furniture that either has glass or really tall legs so that you can see more floor underneath the furniture. If you're having problems with a space that's too big, use contrasting patterns, colors, or textures, things that jump out and grab your attention more and fight for the space almost. You can group your furnishings together in different sections, like over here we got this seating section and this seating section, so it breaks the room up. Use soft or rough textures to absorb sound. Use furnishing of different heights to break long, um, unobstructed views so you can't just see straight across the entire room stick a bookcase or something tall in the middle use large furniture that sits directly on the floor or as close to the floor so you cannot see the floor underneath if space is not correctly planned the other elements of the design won't be near as effective take a minute on the canvas page to go and watch this video clip you could do that after you're entirely done with the presentation. To see some ingenious ways to save space from an engineering furniture design perspective. Our next element of design is shape and form. I consider it the same element because we're just looking at two different views of our object. Shape is the two-dimensional outline, like circles, rectangles. If I took this chair, and I just looked through the two-dimensional outline, I'd probably say something like L-shaped or just chair-shaped, two-dimensionally. Form is the three-dimensional objects. When you look at the whole thing, we can get cylinders and 
rectangular prisms and spheres from our three-dimensional objects once we look at the whole object instead of looking just at the two-dimensional outline of the object, which is where we can get a full-on chair shape and chair form that takes up space in the room. Line is our next element of design. It is the outline of an object, two points that are connected, and it gives direction and divides the space. There are four different types of line, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, and curved. Each of these lines have different effects or illusions in a room. Let's go through each of them. Vertical lines. Add the feeling of power, dignity, masculinity, and height to room. Height being probably the number one. If you have a lot of vertical lines, you can make a room seem taller and more spacious that way. Horizontal lines go back and forth. They are sturdy, calm, restful, and add width. Diagonal lines create activity and motion. They make a space seem fun. Curved lines soften objects, make the room seem softer and less rigid. They can also be quite playful and fun. Texture is the way an object feels and looks. We can describe it as rough, smooth, shiny, hard, soft, etc. There are two different kinds. Some textures are tactile which means we can feel the variation on the surface. You can actually feel the texture if it's rough or smooth, right? Or soft. And then some textures are visual, which means they have been applied to the surface using line or color or pattern, but you only see it. You can't actually feel it when you run your fingers over the surface. Pattern is the repetition of our elements of shape, form, line, or color in a specific design order. Like we have repeating pineapples here. We have a color pattern. We have a zigzag color pattern. Patterns draw your eye around the room. They are very much connected with line that way. Patterns must be used carefully within an interior or it could be overwhelming. Usually patterns are found very subtly within the interiors. Look for them in the carpets, walls, or in decorations. On things like pillows and maybe rugs is where you'd see the pattern really jump out, whereas the rest of it tends to take a step back so it's not overwhelming. Color is our last element of design. Color is one of the most important tools in interior design. It has the biggest impact and will actually alter the appearance of form or space. Color has many, many illusions. Color can also affect your performance abilities and change your moods a little bit. A little bit of a psychological effect there.